Hey guys, so if you're not familiar with what a Sonoff is and you love automating your home on a budget, you definitely are going to want to pay attention. The Sonoff switch is less than $5 and when wired into an appliance or an extension cord, it can control just about any device that you plug into it. Now straight out of the box, these actually work with Google Assistant, with Amazon Echo, with Ift and with Nest, oddly enough, as well as the Magic Home app. And if that's enough for you, great. Just go ahead and order some, link in the description, and you are good to go. But today what we're going to be doing is flashing these to work with smart things. Now I did do a video on this in the past, but they changed the chip on board. It is no longer the ESP8266, it is now the ESP8285, I believe. That really doesn't matter, the flashing method just changed. So, let's get started. What's up guys, it's Drew from Taylor Tech and on this channel we do smart home tech reviews, installations, and DIY guides. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any time, check out the video description down below for show notes and product links for everything mentioned in this video. Now here is the packaging for the Sonoff itself. I ordered these off Amazon. You can order them straight from ITED, which is the actual manufacturer of these. I believe these may be rebranded, the ones on Amazon. I just wanted to get them here quicker. I paid a few extra dollars when getting them from Amazon. They come in a two pack. Uh, like I said, I just wanted them to get here sooner rather than ordering them from IT themselves, which ships from China, I do believe. But this is the switch itself. It's a little bit bulky, uh, maybe bulkier than your standard smart switch. But keep in mind that this is, uses Wi-Fi and there are a lot of maybe cheaper components inside. But like I said, I made a video on this, what was it, over a year now, and, and they've been honestly one of the more reliable switches that I have. So if we just crack into this straight away, we can see that this is the board itself. Now, when I received my two pack of these, it's a little bit different design than it was before if you're familiar with these or have had them in the past. They did not have these wires on top. These two black wires on top here, it was actually just a bead of solder across the bottom here with an air gap as you can see here from my older one. And it's just a different design. None of that really matters in this case. I will go ahead and mention now though that in the next video I'm going to be making one of these less than $5 someone off devices control my garage door. I've already had this set up for over a year once again, so it does work great. I just never showed you guys. So with the new Sonoff devices, I'm gonna show you how to get this set up to open your garage door in the next video. But in this video, it does not require any tinkering at all. I just wanted to show you that they did come out with a different design. So we will be flashing a new firmware onto the device. Now don't let that intimidate you. You will need a few other supplies to do this but it is really simple if you follow along carefully. I'm just gonna set aside all of the plastic housing for now. We're just gonna be worried about the board. The next thing you're gonna need is a serial to USB FTDI adapter. Like I said, links will be down below for this. You do wanna make sure that the bottom of yours says FTDI 232 like mine does. There are some fakes out there. I've actually ordered from the same link on Amazon and got two different devices. So definitely want to make sure that this is says FTDI 232 and that this connector is not gold. I've gotten one that says something else on the bottom and this is gold. That is typically a knockoff and it may or may not work. Another thing you're going to need is some female to male pins here. This just makes this a lot easier and they slide right onto the FTDI adapter like this and makes life a lot easier. And the last thing that you'll need is a USB cable, USB type A to USB type B to plug into the FTDI adapter. And finally, you will need a PC. I'm not sure if this will work on Mac. I don't have a Mac to try it on. So if you have a Mac, let me know in the comments down below and I will pin your post if it does work for Macs to let everyone else know as well. Okay, so there are a couple preliminary things to do on the computer first, and that is installing the device handler and the smart app which is called Sonoff Connect. If you've already done this before or you know how to do that, the link for this page here will be in the description below. You can skip to this time to pick up when we're done. So the link in the description will take us to this page. And I do have to give a shout out to Eric M123 for making all this possible, writing the device handler and the smart app. 
So shout out to him. So I'm gonna click on the device handler first, which is the first uh, GitHub link. And then in a separate tab, I'm gonna go ahead and sign into my SmartThings IDE account. Go ahead and go through the sign in. If you haven't done this before, just go ahead and sign up using your SmartThings information. Okay, and then we'll go to my device handlers at the top there. And as you can see, I have all my device handlers here. And we can find the Sonoff one here. I actually have two of them for some reason. Let's go ahead and make a third, why not? So if we go to create new device handler up at the top right corner, we can click on from code. Now we'll go back to that GitHub page and click on raw, select all with control A and copy that. And then go back to creating the new device handler and we'll paste all that code there. Click create. And we'll save it and publish for me. Now if we go back into my device handlers, there should be three now. Yep, there are three Sonoff Wi-Fi switch device handlers. Now we will go to my smart apps, exact same process. Top right corner, new smart app and from code and then we'll get the code for that. If we just go back to that smart things community page. Now we'll scroll down to the second GitHub link, which right here says smart apps. So we'll click on that one, click on raw select all and copy this and then paste it here. Create once again and save it. Make sure it says Sonoff Connect up there and we'll publish it for me. Now your SmartThings account will recognize the device as it should after we get it flashed. Now I'm gonna hop back to the SmartThings community post and I will leave a direct link if I can in the description down below for the actual firmware image, but it is right here. If you do wanna go ahead and follow this, if you just click on this, it will download. As you can see down here, I downloaded a second one, sonoff.ino.generic.bin, and that is the image that we will be flashing onto the Sona. I went ahead and moved mine to the desktop here. And then you will also need the Node MCU firmware flasher or programmer. That will also be a link to that in the description below. And I will try to put all the links that we need in order so you uh, can follow along with me as I'm doing this. Once you download the programmer, it will look just like this and we need to hop in config and then click on this little settings button here and you just need to find the location of your firmware image and like i said i threw it on the desktop so here it is and there we go and you want to keep these settings the same 0x00000 then go to advanced and you want the baud rate to be 115 200 just like this flash size one megabyte and the uh, flash speed 40 megahertz and SPI mode you want to switch to D out. Now if we go back over to operation there won't be a COM port more than likely because you haven't plugged in your FTDI adapter yet. Now before we plug that in we are going to go ahead and get this connected. Now I will display an image on the screen here so it's a little bit easier for you to see rather than what I'm doing here but I try to color code my wires as good as I can with what I had so I have black going to ground, and ground is the furthest one over. Skip one, and then we have VCC, which is power. And speaking of power, we do want to make sure that the FTDI adapter is set to 3.3 volts. Most of these come default set to five volts, and that is done with this jumper here. So this is how they come set to five volts. And you want to just simply take this jumper off and move it over to this one, and it's displayed on the board as 3.3 volts. Very important or else you may fry your Sonoff. So anyways, we've got ground skip one that we're not using, and then we have VCC for power, which I have red. And then we have two more that we'll need. The orange one is TX, and the white one is RX. Now on your Sonoff itself, you will see four different holes here that we are going to be inserting our pins into and one of them is square, the one closest to the button is square. And that's the one that we will be plugging the VCC into, which is power. So VCC in there, followed by TX. Sorry, TX is orange for me. So VCC followed by TX, which I made orange, followed by RX, which is white, and then ground, which I made black. 
And now the trick here is without having to solder that header on there, like I mentioned, make sure they're all down in there pretty good. And now you just want to apply a little bit of pressure to all four of them at the same time. So it's making good contact with the pins on the bottom and just a little bit of pressure should do it, but you want to make sure that you're constantly holding that pressure on. I should have plugged this in here before get in there. There we go. So this end is plugged in. And now a third hand would be ideal because we need to we need to hold this button down and then plug in the USB cable and then we can let the button go. But make sure you're keeping constant pressure on these four wires. Okay, I got the button held in. I'm going to plug it in. Okay. I recognized it. I took my finger off. And the reason you need to do that is to put the sewn off into flashing mode. If you saw a green LED flash on the light, that's no good. That means it's not in flashing mode. So now all we have to do is click flash. And this will take about 15 seconds or so. And we can check this that it is flashing by the green LEDs on the FCDI adapter. All right, so it looks like it flashed correctly. And now I'm just going to unplug this. And now we can disconnect the RX and TX, but go ahead and leave the VCC and ground still in there and then add pressure again. And then we're going to connect it back to the computer, but this time it's only to give the Sonoff power. The three volts put off by the USB cable is enough to go ahead and broadcast the Wi-Fi and make sure this is working correctly and we can add it into smart things at this time as well. So give this uh, about five minutes at the most to go ahead and reboot and broadcast its own Wi-Fi network and from there we'll log into it and log into our own Wi-Fi and get it connected. So for whatever reason typically my phone finds the Sonoff's broadcasted Wi-Fi network quicker and more reliably than my computers for whatever reason. So as you can see here, it is sewn off dot and blurred out, which is the MAC address of the device. So I'm going to enter the password configme, C-O-N-F-I-G-M-E, and connect. And then I will tap to sign into that network. And it should take you to 192.168.4.1. If it doesn't, just go ahead and go to that manually, either on your phone or your computer, whichever you're using and then tap configure Wi-Fi. Then choose your Wi-Fi network. And it has to be a 2.4 gigahertz network. Type in my password, save. And now this should, after about a minute or so, disconnect from this Wi-Fi and reconnect back to my home Wi-Fi. And it should no longer be broadcasting. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and disconnect this again and just give it a reboot and plug it right back in. And now it should be connected to my home Wi-Fi network and now we can go ahead and jump into the SmartThings app and get this working. So if I go to automation, I'm trying to do this with one hand because I'm still holding pressure on the VCC and ground just to go ahead and get this connected. Okay, go to automation and at the bottom go to add a smart app. My apps and then you will click on Sonoff Connect. Now I have three of these and I don't want another one so I'm going to go back. You will click on this. I'm just going to go ahead and go back to my smart apps and click here. And as you can see, I have three down here. I actually have more on a separate account. So just ignore that. But if I go to discover devices, it does say that it takes up to five minutes. I find that it takes about 30 seconds. So we'll see how long this takes to find it. Okay. So it says it found two. The Sonoff TH, that is something different. And I believe this one here with the... IP address 192.168.1.68 is the one we're working with. So let's go ahead and click done and next. And it says successfully added. So we'll click next again. And we're going to go ahead and change the name. So we'll click on it down at the bottom. We'll name this Sonoff test. And then you want to click right underneath it, change device name in order to get that change. And we'll click next and save. And now it should be in our things. So if we go to my home and things we can go ahead and see if this is working for us. So there is Sonoff test. If I go ahead and try to cycle through this. Yep, it's working great. So you can see the little LED right here. It's not actually triggering the relay because it's not 
being provided with enough power at the moment. But if you watch the LED as I push the phone on, off, on, off, very responsive. And as far as range goes, if you have Wi-Fi signal there, then you should have signal with this to work. So now that we realize that this is working beautifully, we can hop into the settings and take a look. You can set a password if you wish. And you can also set something like an auto off, which is a nice feature for getting the garage door controller working. But we will look more into that in the next video. So now that we've got this working with SmartThings, we can go ahead and put 120 volt power into this. Actually, this will work with anywhere from 90 to 250 volts AC in the input with a max current of 10 amps. Now, if you wanna wire this straight to an appliance, whether that be a coffee maker, a lamp, a Sensi burner or whatever those are called, whatever you wanna actually control with this, you can just cut your wire in half, put the input into this end and the output into this end, and you're good to go. What I like to do is use one of these cheap extension cords you can get for a dollar or two and just cut the extension cord up rather than cutting your actual appliances cable up just in case you may not want that automated in the, in the long run. Okay, so for these types of extension cables, you have one end that is ribbed and one end that is smooth. And typically, the one that is ribbed is neutral. So look for the ribs on the cable. This one here is ribbed. This one here is smooth. So the ribbed I'm going to put with the N, which is the farther side from me. So with a small flat head, you can go ahead and undo these screws a little bit. I stripped off about a quarter inch there, which will push all the way in and tighten that screw on top back up. And the same with this one. And we'll do the same thing with the output, just make sure that the ribbed and neutral is on the right side. All right, now that those are wired up, you can put these little plastic covers on. All right, so now we are wired up. We've got our sewn off in the middle. It is pretty secure. I just wouldn't put too much force on it. Okay, so I've got this cheap little lamp plugged into the output end of the extension cord here, and I've got this end going down to power. And let's just see if it works. There we go. On, off, oops, on, off. And by the way, this little push button on the Sonoff itself is a manual control. And it does show the status in the app, no problem. So there we go. $5, actually less than $5 smart switch if you order straight from ITED. That can be programmed with smart things to work with your home Wi-Fi. And it works really well. Like I said, I've been running these for over a year now without really any issues. The only issue that I have seen is when you have a power outage and your network goes offline and your Sonoff goes offline, it kind of throws everything out of whack. When everything does boot back up, you may need to reboot your Sonoff once again. And worst case that's actually happened to me once was I need to go back into the smart app and rediscover the device. After that, it picked right back up right where it left off. So definitely stay tuned to the next part of this video or the, or the next video that I release. I'm actually going to be hacking into the Sonoff a little bit more in, in order to make this work with my garage door. So using the same connection method we did here, we're going to allow this output to connect to your garage door bell wires and allow the relay to close that for a second and send that signal to your garage door opener to open or close your garage door. Now, I don't know how much cheaper you can get than a $5 garage door controller connected to your Wi-Fi. So that's all I have for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you are subscribed for more videos like this and drop a like down below to show your support. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.